91 won the globe. My name is William Troyer, joined by Benjamin Cotton, live from the Ruth Gunn Gymnasium for Goshen College women's basketball. And Ben, it's an exciting season as the fall sports, sports wrap up and the women's basketball team and the winter sports begin their play of the 2019 season. Let's get right into it, Ben. The Goshen College women's basketball team, 8 and 22 last season. This year, looking to improve on that, obviously. What are some things they've done in the offseason? that can make this team better than 8-22 and 1-17 and and in Crossroads League play? Well, they brought in some great players. And before I even get to the great players, uh, let me explain how important the past players that graduated that left us. So last year, you had Haley Archibald, who was the point guard who had over 110 assists for the team. And the next person was in the 50s. So that's going to be a big loss for the Maple Leafs. But it's not over for the Maple Leafs as they brought in great talent, as Susanna Yoder, as we're going to get into later, and also Janora, who's – also, Janara Flowers, who's from Indiana State, a D1, so that's going to be a big pickup. And the Maple Leafs, they're going to look good. They're looking great right now because you have a lot of veterans that, that had a lot of minutes as a freshman. So yeah, having that freshman minutes helps you grow as a player and helps with the progression. Yeah, so the Maple Leafs last season were plagued by the injury bug a little bit. Two players tore their ACL, Kiara Copeland and Claire Rauch. They're both going to return to the Maple Leafs squad this season. How much impact do those two players have on this team? Well, definitely they're an instant impact. They're two juniors that the Maple Leafs needed back. Starting off with Kara, she's a combo guard, tough, physical, able to get to the rim and create plays for others, get shooters open. And if we're talking about shooters, you got to talk about Claire Routh. She's one of the most elite shooters that the Maple Leafs has ever had. She's a great shooter for the Maple Leafs, and all she needs is this much room, and she's going to knock it down. So bringing back Claire, spacing the floor, and also Kiara to be able to get to the rim and get her open is going to be a great dynamic. Yeah, so now let's take, take a look at the uh, the new players. Two will have an instant impact, as you said a little bit before. Janara Flowers, the D1 transfer from Indiana State, and also Susanna Yoder, the freshman out of uh, Iowa Mennonite School. She scored 578 points as a senior, averaged 27 and a half points in high school. What are these two players going to do for this Maple Leafs team as they get ready to start their season? Yeah, starting off with Flowers, she's a great player. She's a three-level scorer. So that means she can do it all. She can pass, she can shoot, she can get to the rim, and she can defend. Starting off on offense, she's she's a crafty ball handler who's able to create shots around the rim. She's able to adjust mid-air, great body control, a sweet mid-range jumper, knocked down open three. It's gonna be a big dynamic. She's she's really similar to the Final Four team, Lanita Noel. She from she came off the bench. She's a tough guard and always gave an instant impact off the bench. And Janora can do the same thing. And if we're gonna talk about the freshman Susanna Yoder, she is an instant bucket. Like you said, 27 and a half points is ridiculous. That's insane to see. So able to come from Iowa Mennonite School, it's, it's going to be big that she scored so many points and she's going to be able to translate it. And if we're talking about buckets, like I said, she can hit it from outside, she can hit it from inside, and she's going to create for everyone else. And in high school, she had the second most points in Iowa history. So she's an instant impact player. Yeah, and tonight we'll see both of those players coming off the bench as the starting five. They're going to return four of their five from last season. So very strong Maple Leaf team this season. Let's take a look at tonight's matchup against 21st ranked Aquinas College. From Grand Rapids, under head coach Brian Morris in his second season. Now they lost their top four leading scorers and brought in 14 new players. How tough is it for Morris and this Aquinas Saints team to get back to where they were last year in making the, the tournament? Yeah, it's easy to say that it's not the same team as last year as you lose your top four scorers, but they were, 20, they were ranked last year. They were ranked for a reason, not just because the first five. It was the whole team. So those same players that are playing against them in practice got that competition every day to to sharpen their own skills because, as you know, iron sharpens iron. So they're able to progress. And if we're looking at the Saints, Kiwi Hilton, she was one of the starters for the Saints. So she's going to play well today. Really expect that out of her. And they're 21st ranked for a reason. They're not going to they're not going to give them that title. It's hard to get those in the NAIA. And last season, the Maple Leafs went to Aquinas when they were ranked and defeated them 76-72. So Aquinas coming into this one with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder, looking to even the score up a little bit here. Yeah, definitely. And if we're talking about at home, Aquinas only lost four home games, and Goshen College was one of them. So you know they got a bitter taste in their mouth. They, they really want to get out there. They really want the revenge. We're in for a great one tonight. Coming up next, women's basketball starts their 2019-2020 campaign. It's all coming up right here on 91 Won the Globe, your home for Maple Leaf Athletics. 15-520 remain in the second quarter. Hinton going to inbound and gets to Smith. Smith across half court, top of the key, setting up the offense. Right wing. It's Alvin, still with it. 
Top of the key, Smith. Good defense from the Maples. 12 on the shot clock. Here's Day. Top of the key gives back to Alvin. Into Hinton. Now Dowell. Right block, blocked by Chapman, but picks up the foul. Yeah, Chapman shows vertical, but she definitely took a swipe with the right arm at first. She doesn't agree with the call. She's arguing that Dow is dropping her shoulder into her chest, so it's just a natural reaction for her arms to fall. But if you're Chapman, you just got to stay strong, keep them high. Chapman picks up her first. Team's third. And Shooting two is Dow. And Flowers comes out of the game. Kyra will, will replace her once again. Flowers has a limited game due to a back injury. Dowell's first good. She's now two for three on the day, looking for one more. Puts it up. That one short. Rebound by Denise Chapman. She goes one for two. 18-17, Maple Leafs advantage, 4-45, second quarter. Denise Chapman goes to work and easily scores over Dowell. Good move from Chapman. It's going to be a good night for the Maple Leafs that they're able to feed her. Here's the press, 2017, 430, second quarter. Day breaks it. Going to go all the way to the basket. Now kicks it out to Hinton. Right wing three, pointer up. Too strong. Rebound by Cockerham on the strong side. Cockerham pushing for the Maple Leafs. She's to the top of the key. Gives to Kyer. Top of the key, Rowe. She's going to slow down, reset the offense. 20 on the shot clock. Double screen. Goes to the right off of Chapman. Rowe goes all the way under. Kyer pump fakes for three. Drives inside. Right hand floater. Too strong rebound by Hinton. Here come the Saints. Hinton, top of the key. She's going to keep driving and now gives to Day right wing. 20 on the shot clock. Day drives left hand. Floater, no good. Rebound by Day. Gets her own rebound. Loose underneath. Stolen by Cockerham. And now Rowe will get it with a shoe untied. Still has it, but Cochran, top of the key, thought about it, gonna drive inside, nice move to get through the defense, in for two. 22-17, 3.30, remain in the second quarter. Maple Leafs on top. Here's Hinton in the press. Smith, left side, gets across. Here's Day, pump fakes. Rujo, good defense, Smith, top of the key, 14 on the shot clock. Left corner, three-pointer on the way from Alvin. Too strong. Rebound on the weak side by Cockerham. Here comes Rowe now. Left wing. Crosses. Spins. Travel. Yeah, easy one right there. Just got a little out of control trying to get to the rim. Substitutions for both sides. For the Maple Leafs, it'll be freshman Susanna Yoder. And for the Saints, it'll be their center, number 30, Howard Ferguson. And also they'll be bringing back in Kaylee Ford for the Saints. And a late substitution for the Maple Leafs will be Kara Murph. Ford in the backcourt. Breaks the press by herself. Nearly stolen away by Cockerham. On the ground is Alvin, stolen by Cockerham. Now here comes Yoder. A one on three. She goes up and foul. We'll go to the line for two. Yoder showing the speed right there. Just beating him to the rim and drawing contact and trying to finish. Again, Yoder in her senior season at IMS, scored 27 and a half a game, five rebounds a game, four assists, and three steals for 1,581 career points. Pretty terrific stats in high school. <laughs> yeah, more than terrific. Yoder cannot draw on the first one. She misses. 22-17, 2.49, second quarter. One more for Yoder. Got that one. Her first career bucket as a Maple Leaf. 23-17. Presses on. Forward in the backcourt. Five seconds to get across. They get it to Miller. Miller breaks it. Miller drives all the way. Dumps it off. Stolen by Murph. And now Yoder will bring it up for the Maple Leafs. Top of the key, Yoder. 20 on the shot clock. Picks up her dribble. Skip pass to Kyer in the right corner. Kyer drives, kicks it to the corner, and there were two Maple Leafs there, but neither of them could corral it. Yeah, that's a tough one right there as both Cockerham and Yoder drifted to the corner looking for the shot, and they both didn't go for the pass, trying to get, trying to be nice against the other. Ford gives to Dave. Double teamed in the backcourt. 
Ford advances today. Left corner, Alvin. Pump fake, drives middle. Drops it to Fredrickson. Fredrickson in the middle of the lane. No good. Murph almost rebounded it. Now Ford, top of the key three. No good. Cockerham secures the rebound. Here comes Cockerham and the Maple Leafs. Cockerham left side all the way inside. Scoop left hand layup. A little bit out of control. And steals it back though from Fredrickson on the back side. Here's Cockerham, right wing to Rougeau. Top of the key, Kyer. Rougeau, right wing. 15 on the shot clock. Kyer beats her defender. Gives to Murph. Murph goes up right hand. Got it. Good move from Kiara Murph. Her first bucket of the 2019 season. 25-17, second quarter. Here's Ford, right wing. Skip pass to Alvin, left wing. Drives baseline on Cockerham. Goes up. Great defense from Cockerham to take away the baseline. Here comes the speedy Rougeau. She's got one person to beat. She Eurostep got around and lost the ball. That would be a beautiful move. Oh, man. That one's got me on my chair there. Just using the speed. A little ahead of eight. Euro to the right and just slipped out of her hands. Yeah, great move. Seeing the athleticism early from the freshman. And Rose going to come back in for the Maple Leafs. 25-17, 106, second quarter. Maple Leafs lead the 21st ranked Aquinas College Saints. I'm William Troyer, joined by Ben Cotton and Zach Begley on the sideline from the Ruth Gunner Gymnasium. Here's Smith, left wing. Chops her feet, drops it off to Day, or rather Williams. Goes up left hand, no good. Weak side rebound, no good. Was attempted but could not get it to fall. Rougeau gives to Yoder. Inside to Murph, free throw line. She's going to face up, back down, spin middle, goes up, blocked. Good block from the Saints. Brady, good block. Left wing, Williams traveled. It just seems it's just a whole nother quarter here for Maple Leafs. Seems like they really just turned the tide here with the pressure. Here's Rowe, thumbs down, setting up the Maple Leafs offense. Right wing, Rougeau. Gives to Cockerham. Top of the key. 18 on the shot clock. Hands to Rowe. No, she's going to keep it herself. Goes up, left hand. No good. Murph with a good offensive rebound. Loose on the ground. Still looking for it. Jump ball. Goes to the Saints. You love seeing that effort by Murph there. Just trying to create extra possessions for the Maple Leafs. 25-17, 10 seconds left in the second quarter. And they're going to bring back this press. She's going to force them just to pick up the ball to the burn the clock. Here's Smith, quickly advancing. Gets doubled, now tripled, and turns it over. Great pressure from the Maple Leafs. We've seen that the whole first half. And now they have five seconds for a final shot. Cockerham inbounds. Row four, three. Pulls it. No good. And that's going to do it for the first half. 25-17. Maple Leafs lead the Aquinas College Saints after one half of action. When we come back, second half analysis, or rather first half analysis on 91 Win the Globe and on the Go Leafs live stream. Cressy and Everett is a local real estate agency with offices in Goshen, Elkhart, and South Bend. Cressy and Everett Real Estate has been helping home buyers and sellers in the Goshen community for nearly 30 years. More information on Cressy and Everett Real Estate by phone at 574-975-7716 or by visiting their offices at 210 South Main Street in Goshen. Current listings available online at CressyEverett.com. Cressy and Everett Real Estate, above and beyond. Learn what that means to you. Partial program support on 91.1 The Globe is brought to you by Adam Mechanical Heating, Air Conditioning, and Plumbing Services, a family-owned and operated business since 2002. They serve the Delaware and Montgomery counties in Pennsylvania. Adam Mechanical is located at 200 West Chester Pike, Havertown, Pennsylvania. More information online at adammechanical.com. Gabe Kermode here with your halftime scoreboard show here on 91.1 The Globe. You're tuned into women's basketball. They're taking on Aquinas College and other Maple Leaf athletics news. 
Maple Leaf women's volleyball played St. Francis. They lost in four sets, moving themselves to 1-13 in in Crossroads League play. Also, happening happened earlier today, men's and women's soccer played. The men traveled to Iwu earlier, and they lost 4-1, to one, and women's soccer fell 1-0 just a little bit ago. In other sports news, Game 2 of the World Series is happening in Houston. That kicked off at 8.07. It's currently tied 2-2 in the top of the fifth inning. Other NBA in NBA action, the Pacers fell to the Pistons 119 to 110. Andre Drummond had 32 points and 23 rebounds to help put the Pacers away. And the Bulls fell to the Hornets 126 to 125. Devontae Graham shined, scoring 24 points and having eight assists. That's your halftime scoreboard show. I'll keep you updated on more scores as the game goes on. But you're listening to women's basketball right here on 91.1 The Globe, your home for Maple Leaf Athletics. iDart Creative Studios believes every person, business, and community has a stirring story to tell. Their job is to make yours unforgettable. Through developing and implementing creative strategies, iDart creatively and collaboratively transforms your ideas into profitable business ventures. For more information, you can visit iDart.com. Serving Northern Indiana customers since 1953, Minnow Travel Service provides professional travel solutions for you, your group, or company. Minnow Travel provides customer service before, during, and after the trip. Minnow Travel Service is located at 210 South Main Street in Goshen. More information is available at minnowtrav.com or by calling 574-535-1521. Minnow Travel Service, let our experience make your experience unforgettable. Minnow Travel is a branch of TZL Travel Group. Zair Construction Incorporated is a residential remodeling and renovation company located on 3rd Street in Goshen. Zair Construction serves the greater Elkhart County community. They provide construction services from preliminary design through project completion. Their phone number is 574-533-4677, also on the web at zairconstruction.com. Back here on 91 on the Globe and on the Go Leafs live stream, my name is William Troyer, joined by Benjamin Cotton. We're here for the Goshen College women's basketball home opener, really season opener, 25-17 after one half of play over the 21st ranked Aquinas College Saints. It was a good first half for the Maple Leafs, a little bit sloppy at times, but, you know, for the most part, they started to find a rhythm, and the athleticism from a year ago to this year is off the charts. Yeah, it's it night and day. shows. It's crazy definitely how shows. much more athletic this team is. Ben, tell us a little bit more about this Maple Leaf squad so far. Yeah, like you said, night and day is the best comparison you can have. Just so much more athleticism, and you can like last year you weren't able to throw the type of press on them where you're just able to jump the passing lanes, get into the rim, creating fouls. And let's dive a little bit deeper into the first half. If you look at the first quarter, you think that the Saints are off to a good run, ready, ready to take this game on the road, try to get one. You have Destiny Dow coming off the bench, scoring seven points, excuse me, nine points. To seven points in the first quarter, nine points in the first half, just off the bench, three, three or four in from around the realm, and she's just been an efficient player. So if you're the Maple Leafs, got to find a way how to stop her. And if you're also the Maple Leafs, you're moving back on to the offensive end. Now you're getting to the rim, but you need to take the right shot. Some of the shots seem a little bit forced as you're like, it feels that they're in the paint. I got to take it rather than I'm in the paint. I got three people around me. I'm going to kick it out. Let's try to get an open three. And if we're talking about threes, it hasn't been raining so far for them as they haven't hit one yet. Yeah. Uh, so now we take a look at the turnovers. I think is pretty outstanding. The Maple Leafs forced 12 turnovers in that mm. first half on the Saints. And when they had their speed line about there, uh, Murph at the five, and then you had Rowe, Flowers, and Rougeau. The three of them moving in the backcourt is pretty tough to break as we saw Aquinas throw about three of them out of bounds and never quite got a a 10-second uh, call, but the quality of shots on the offensive end went went downhill when the Maple Leafs started uh, applying that press, pressure. So I think the Maple Leafs continue to do that in the second half. Yeah. Definitely. Even if you don't get a 10-second call on a press, if you're able to make them cross the half-court line with eight seconds left, only give them 22 seconds to create offense. And if we're being real, they really only get around maybe 
18 to 15 seconds of trying to draw up a play, get some, get an easy shot. Because with that press, you get them out of control, pushing it, trying to find the point guard, trying to get things organized. Then the next thing you know, there's 15 seconds left of the shot clock, and you got to get a shot up quick. Yep, so before we turn it over to Zach Begley here on the sideline, uh, the Maple Leafs outscored the Saints 14-4 to in that second quarter. But again, something they did pretty well last year was hit the three, and we haven't seen one yet. So hopefully those start falling for the Maple Leafs in the second half. Now let's turn it over to Zach Begley. Zach, you listen into the coaches before they went into the locker room to talk to their team. What did you hear from the Maple Leafs? Yeah, um, sort of rolling back to the first quarter a little bit. Uh, coming out of the first quarter, going into the second, there was a lot about great effort, and uh, they needed to fight some nerves a little bit. That first quarter was a little bit nervous. They got it going in the second, obviously, only giving up four points in the second. Um, defensively, they, they talked about a little bit staying in front a little bit better, and offensively, getting it into Chapman and Murph, and then working it out. Getting some post touches to kind of spread out the defense a little bit, and making sure that they don't have to only guard the perimeter, making sure they have to go inside, too. Um, also, they need to re coach Coaches talked about rebounding a little bit better. Uh, they didn't get clean rebounds. They were getting rebounds, but they weren't clean. So they were talking about making sure boxing out and getting easier rebounds instead of having to dive on the floor a lot and getting all these rebounds after loose balls and things like that. And then uh, last thing is they need to, when they're attacking, like you said, Ben, attacking to pass the ball instead of looking to score every time, look to move the ball, things like that. So that's what, kind of what they talked about before going into the locker room. As always, Zach, we appreciate you doing your hard work over there on the sidelines. Ben, you got some more for us. Yeah, Zach brings up a great point. He talks about the jitters, it's, which kind of surprised me with the Maple Leafs having a, a veteran team with lots of juniors and one senior, but a lot of this rotation has seen a lot of good playing time. So it kind of threw me off to the sloppy start. That just threw me off. And if we're talking about the Saints, they're just not finishing out the rim. They've broken the press a few times. They're able to get to the rim, drop off for a layup, and just rims out, or they're just attacking and just not finishing. If, if I'm Coach Brian Morris and I'm talking to the Saints, you got to tell them you got to finish your layups. You're getting with this press is is getting you out of control. They're they're rushing you. They're they got your pace going. If you're gonna go to the rim, you got to finish those. I mean, there's no lack of speed on this Aquinas team either. They're really moving it up and down the floor. They're three guards: Kamaria Williams, Deja Day, and. Jada Smith are extremely quick and they've caused some problems for the Maple Leafs on the other side too so it's really been a battle of guards but countering that statement we've really seen the Maple Leafs exceed when they go inside the Chapman and Murph so I would look for them to continue to do that in the second half as well. Yeah I definitely agree with that if they're able to have a, a, a healthy diet of Denise Chapman and Carol Murph they can have a successful game where they will just dominate the boards and dominate the paint. Really, a lot of people say if you're able to win rebounds and points in the paint, sometimes that's all the, that's all that you need to win a ball game. So if the Maple Leafs are able to just just lock down the paint on both sides, force those guards in tough situations, they can they can even stretch out this lead even more. And currently, the Maple Leafs lead the rebounds 26 to 20. We'll check on that more in the second half when we come back. More first half analysis. We'll take a look at what's coming up in the second half. It's all coming up right here on 91.1 The Globe, your home for Maple Leaf athletics. Manage your money like a pro with TCU. You can score big with the TCU Debit MasterCard that gives you cash back on everyday purchases. Plus, you'll win with access to hundreds of free ATMs across Indiana. Check out TCU's starting lineup of services to help you manage your cash and build your savings. Visit TCUnet.com to kick off your better banking experience. See TCU Debit MasterCard terms and conditions for details. Alliance One and Co-op ATMs within Indiana are free. New members are subject to a $7 membership fee and $5 initial share deposit. Everance is a faith-based financial service organization. Located at 1110 North Main Street in downtown Goshen, Everance believes that it's possible to incorporate your faith and values with your decisions about money. More information about Everance is available online at everance.com or by phone at 574-533-9511. Everance, a faith-based service organization. iDART Creative Studios believes every person, business, and community has a stirring story to tell. Their job is to make yours unforgettable. Through developing and implementing creative strategies, iDART creatively and collaboratively transforms your ideas into profitable business ventures. For more information, you can visit iDART.com. Eric Gunther and State Farm Insurance are proud to underwrite a portion of tonight's Penn football game at the Regional Radio Sports Network. Eric's office is located at 411 East Ireland Road in South Bend, Indiana. Eric Gunther State Farm Agency offers home, life, auto, as well as financial services. 
For more information on these and other products, Eric Gunther can be reached at 574-291-1597. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Cressy and Everett is a local real estate agency with offices in Goshen, Elkhart, and South Bend. Cressy and Everett Real Estate has been helping home buyers and sellers in the Goshen community for nearly 30 years. More information on Cressy and Everett Real Estate by phone at 574-975-7716 or by visiting their offices at 210 South Main Street in Goshen. Current listings available online at CressyEverett.com. Cressy and Everett Real Estate, above and beyond. Learn what that means to you. Serving Northern Indiana customers since 1953, Minnow Travel Service provides professional travel solutions for you, your group, or company. Minnow Travel provides customer service before, during, and after the trip. Minnow Travel Service is located at 210 South Main Street in Goshen. More information is available at minnowtrav.com or by calling 574-535-1521. Minnow Travel Service, let our experience make your experience unforgettable. Minnow Travel is a branch of TZL Travel Group. Partial program support on 91.1 The Globe is brought to you by Adam Mechanical Heating, Air Conditioning, and Plumbing Services, a family-owned and operated business since 2002. They serve the Delaware and Montgomery counties in Pennsylvania. Adam Mechanical is located at 200 West Chester Pike, Havertown, Pennsylvania. More information online at adammechanical.com. Welcome back here on 91.1 The Globe and on the Go Leafs live stream. My name is William Troy, joined by Benjamin Cotton. Sitting at 25-17 is the score of the women's basketball home opener. Season opener. I keep saying home opener, but it is the season <laughs> you're, opener. You're not wrong. You're not it wrong. Is, yeah, I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm right still. 25-17, 2 remain before we start the second half. What do you expect from Aquinas in the second half as they struggled with the press, the pressure? Uh, from the Maple Leafs, and then didn't really get any quality offense going. So what do you expect the Quinnets to do to change it up in the second half? Yeah, if I'm the head coach, Brian Morris is basically telling them that the press is working because the Maple Leafs are speeding them up. If they're able to play at their own pace, just work the ball, get across half court, and just stay in their own rhythm, things will work out better. But now with the Maple Leafs rushing them, getting them running, they're not, they're able to finish at the rim. That's why they're shooting 21% on the, from the field, the Saints are. So if the Saints can just calm down, relax, handle the press, move the ball, just get it across, and just run some sets, they'll be all right. And if you're the Maple Leafs, I think you need to definitely continue to look inside because the three-pointer's not falling, and your centers have done an outstanding job scoring so far, even though they're not really favored size-wise, height-wise, I guess I should say. They are still getting the job done. Uh, they got some real nice footwork, Chapman and Murph do, and they've been successful so far. I would look for them to continue going inside. Yeah, definitely. I can see that. As Chapman, she's just so strong, so dominant down low. And like you said, the three-pointer's not falling, but it could fall in the second half. But some way that can that can help it is feeding the post first and having a post kick out. Because if, if you didn't know, if the ball is able to move around, get into the paint, and goes from the paint to the outside, there's a better chance of going in just because do the ball movement and just freeze up shooters and have a, have a great look at the rim, catch it in rhythm, and hopefully knock it down. And again, I also like the Maple Leaf speed lineup when they go with Cockerham, Flowers, Rougeau, Mariah Rowe. It's a little bit of a shorter lineup, but Aquinas really isn't using their size tonight, and uh, they're just using that speed. So if they're going to go with their speed. I think the Maple Leafs counter with their speed. But we see the Maple Leafs return their starters to the court to begin the half, as does Aquinas. Yeah, and going back to that press, for the Maple Leafs, that can be really dangerous. Like you said, they are a little short, but that speed really does make up for it. When you're forcing your opponent to shoot tough shots at the rim, just scooping up, taking the ball off the rim, and just pushing the break from coast to coast. If you're the Maple Leafs, you also cannot be satisfied with just an eight-point lead. We saw the Maple Leafs go on a 6-0 run earlier on and Aquinas has all of the capable skills to do the same thing with their speed and pressure. Maple Leafs will be going right to left in the second half. Aquinas going left to right. And that's where we begin. Copeland catches at half court and goes to the left wing. Spins. Right wing. Copeland. Hands to Rowe. Rowe uses a double screen. Top of the key. Spins middle. Kicks to Priggy, top of the key, three-pointer on the way, too strong. Board on the offensive glass by Chapman. She's going to dribble three times, kick it to Copeland, wide open in the three. Got it. That's the one. Kiara Copeland for three, the Maple Leafs' first three-point bucket of the game. 
begins the scoring in the second half. 28-17, Maple Leafs lead by 11. That post kick out worked. Maple Leafs in a 1-3-1. Here's Hinton, skip pass to Williams. Drives back to Hinton in the corner, dribbles back up to the right wing, 10 on the shot clock. Smith, top of the key, dribbles, penetrates, drops off, left hand layup, good. Smart back door right there. Williams scores, Priggy left wing. Mariah Rowe, top of the key, now dribbles to the right wing, hands to Copeland. Copeland, right wing, top of the key. Cockerham, crosses left, inside, no good. Rebound, and now here come Aquinas, it's a one on three break for Deja Day. She goes up left hand, the layup good. Here's Cockerham, top of the key, skip pass to Priggy, right wing. And now Cockerham, Copeland. Copeland drives, gives to Chapman. Chapman wasn't ready for it, and a turnover. And right there, that's a great pass by Copeland to Chapman. Just Chapman wasn't ready for it, but those are the type of passes you want. Coach Miller urging the team to get it inside. We talked about that earlier on, how the Maple Leafs need to continue going inside because they were successful in the first half. 1-3-1 one, one zone. Top of the key, Smith, Hinton. Right corner, nearly stolen by Rowe, and she's going to pick up the push foul. Yeah, Rowe right there, just a little bit out of control. She was she was in the bait of trying to get the steal or, or, or staying back and just a little bit too much body contact forcing the player out. Hinton going to inbound in front of her own bench. 20 on the shot clock. Gives to Williams. Hinton, Smith, right wing, dribbles into Fredrickson. Fredrickson goes middle, left hand. Hook is no good, and will go to the Maple Leafs. And if you're the Saints, you really want to get that basketball to the high post or that free throw line area. That's the best way to beat the 1-3-1 one, one press. 28-21, eight minutes exact remain in the third quarter. Maple Leafs on top. Here's Copeland for Goshen College. Gives to Priggy. Stolen away. Williams read that perfectly, and she misses the left-hand layup on the fast break. Now the Maple Leafs are up a person. Four on five, or five on four, rather. Copeland swings it to Cocker in left corner. Three-pointer on the way. Short. Rebound. On the weak side by Williams. Here comes Smith, pushing quick, left corner, hitting. She can shoot it, and she will. Left corner three, got it. And Hinton's the last person you want to leave open. 28-24, not a great start in that second, or rather, second half for the Maple Leafs. We'll keep it here, though. Ben, what have you seen in the first two and a half minutes for the Maple Leafs? For the Maple Leafs, it seems like they just got punched in the mouth here, where the Saints just came out strong, a lot of defensive pressure. And now they're getting open layups. Hinton starting to find starting to find her rhythm. Like that's only one three pointer, but if Hinton gets one down, she's she's capable of hitting about three or four more because that's how talented she is from beyond the arc. It seems like the Saints are bringing in some more height as to be bringing in number forty, Marissa Brandy. Yeah, she stands at six three. She's a a big body inside to match the size of Murph. Uh, Aquinas, though, showing their speed, and we saw that uh, they really should be down two, but they missed the uh, the fast break layup. But they're here to apply the pressure, and that's what they're doing so far in this second half. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to see if Coach Miller tells the Maple Leafs come back out in that one through one zone press. It's gonna be man D for the Saints. Sideline out of bounds. Friggy inbounds to Rowe in the backcourt. 23 on the shot clock. Priggy faces up top of the key. Gives to Rowe. Thought about the three inside to Chapman. Drops it up to Priggy. Right hand layup. No good, but she'll go to the line for two. That's a great touch pass by Chapman right there. Reading that she's already going to be trapped on while the ball was already in the air. And just catching it, dropping off the Priggy. Substitution for the Saints. Yeah, the Saints will be bringing in number 21, Kiara Alvin. As Priggy goes to the line for her first two free throws of the season last year, shot 77% from the charity strike. First one too strong. Maple Leafs struggling with their free throws again, like we saw early in, early on in the last season. Struggling to convert. One more for Priggy. No good. Too strong on that one. She goes 0 for 2 from the line. 28-24. Here are the Saints. Right wing Williams gives to Alvin, drives baseline, stolen nicely by Rowe, preventing Hinton from an open three-pointer potentially. 
Rowe, top of the key. She's going to keep going. Skips two flowers. Left corner pump fake. Nice pump fake. Offered foot. And now a turnover. Here come the Saints. Two on one. Williams goes up left hand, or rather Deja Day goes up left handed good. 28 26, 6 40. Third quarter. Flowers across the timeline. Hands to Rowe. 20 seconds now. Rowe's got the size Mitch Mash. She's not going to take it. Priggy, right wing to Flowers. Flowers looking in, gives to Chapman. Chapman fakes one way, goes the other, and traveling. Yeah. Trying to hit it with a double spin, but our feet were sliding with the pivot. And Maple's going to sub in Kyer for Cockerham. Here comes the pressure. From the Maple, we saw this early. They got the smaller lineup in, more speed on the court. Here's Smith in the backcourt, gives to Day. Skip pass to Smith, and now gets it ahead to Alvin. Alvin turns on the right wing, drives all the way inside, throws it up, and gets the foul. Priggy's going to draw or pick up that foul. Her first, team's first of the half. Yeah, and Priggy just couldn't slide in front right there. And with this press zone, if they're able, if they're going to do a one-three-one press full court, you have to get back. You can't leave any open man as they have just a free lane to the Alvin's realm. first is up and swishes it through. Her first point of the season. This one will tie it if she can convert it. It's up, and it's good. So she gets to 28 all. 6-10 in the third quarter remains as Flowers walks it up across the timeline. Spins. Left wing, back to row. Top of the key now. Way out past the volleyball line. 15 on the shot clock. Row drives, hands to Kyer. Back to Mariah Rowe, left corner. Thought about the three, now she takes it. No good. Chapman, nice offensive rebound. She's going to body her person up. No good. Saved by Kyer, but here comes Aquinas College. Here's Smith, left wing. Gives to Alvin. She traveled. Substitution for the Maple Leafs. Yep, it's going to be Murph for Chapman. Trying to, Coach Miller trying to keep her bigs fresh so they will run the floor. And Coach Miller also be bringing in Rojo. As will be coming in for Kyra. Seems to be limping after saving the ball on the baseline. Yeah, she tweaked her ankle in practice yesterday twice. Maybe suffering some side effects of that. Mm. Back into play. 28 all. 5-30. Third quarter. Row top of the key. Directing, directing traffic. Here's that speed lineup we saw earlier on in the first half. Roger. Gives to Flowers. She drives inside. Tough drive. Dropped it off to Murph. Blocked. Murph gets her own rebound. Goes back up. Blocked again. Priggy now has it. And she's fouled. Maple is playing tough, but a little bit out of control there. Seems like they're trying to force too many shots up. Substitution for Aquinas. It'll be, it'll be Hinton for Day. Mariah Rowe inbounding. Right side underneath her own basket. Flowers catches. Turns wide open. Goes up. No foul. Murph rebounds. Goes up. She can't get it to fall. And... Aquinas rebounds are on the weak side. Smith, top of the key. 28 all, 455, third quarter. Here's Williams, top of the key. Smith, left wing. Might have got away with the travel. Drops it off wide open inside. Right hand lib, no good. Offensive rebound on the weak side by Brady. And Hinton launches from the left wing. Too strong rebound by Priggy. They got numbers as a Saint fell. Rowe, lob pass inside for Rouge. Rougeau, excuse me, too far in front of her. And for Maple Leafs, they'll be bringing in Cockerham and Yoder. And Deja Day takes a quick break, and now she's back into the game. 30-second timeout for Goshen College. Yes. Ben, yes. The Maple Leafs struggling to score in this second half. Yeah, it seems like every quarter it just keeps uh, flip-flopping. First quarter, it went to the Saints, then Maple Leafs played strong. Now it seems like it, the momentum just swung back to the Saints. And it seems like it's all a common theme. Finishing at the rim is a big, is is the factor here. It seems that in the first quarter, Saints are finishing at the rim. Maple Leafs couldn't. Second quarter, Maple Leafs are finishing at the rim, and the Saints couldn't. Now we're flip flop. They're tied up, and 
The Maple Leafs got to make these layups, and they got to be better with the passing. Yeah, the only bucket scored was on the Kiara Copeland three, and that was Early. Made, well, about a minute out of halftime. Yeah. And they've been scoreless for some time now, 28 all. Aquinas scoring 11 to the Maple Leaf three in the third quarter. Here's the pressure. Hinton gets around Yoder. Hinton going to keep driving now. She pulls it back. Top of the key, Day. The southpaw. Right wing, Alvin. Faces up, gives to Smith, top of the key. Smith off of a screen from Dowell. No good, weak side rebound, fought for, and stays with the Saints. And shot clock's going to reset the 20. Once again, new rule in the NAIA. The shot clock does not go back to 30. It'll only go back to 20 seconds. Sideline out of bounds from Hinton. Gives to Smith. Smith going to drive inside. Give to Dowell. Dowell goes up. Blocked by Murph. And pulled down by Rujo. And now a foul by Dowell. Good defense from Kiara Murph. She led the Maple Leafs last season with 37 blocks. Picks up another. Yeah, and Dow with a little bit of a frustration foul right there. Got into her shot blocked and just, just a little angry there and just took a swipe at it. You hate to see those 94-footers. Yeah. Rowe across half court. Crosses on Smith. Hands to Cockerham. Cockerham faces up. Two steps in front of the volleyball line. Murph, Yoder, 15 on the shot clock. Yoder right wing. Looking. Gives to Rowe. And a foul on Dowell. She picks up another one. That's going to be her third foul. Two coming in the last 35 seconds. Yeah, on, on that foul right there, I saw that Murphy was trying to get in position, and Dow just didn't. She was just trying to stay aggressive, and her right arm came around to the chest, and it will just be an easy call. Allie Fredrickson comes back into the game for Dowell. Row inbounds. Knocked away by Hinton. Once again, they'll try this from underneath on the right side. Rowe looking, gives to, or tried to give to, Rougeau, and will stay again with the Maple Leafs. This time, sideline out of bounds. Cockerham finds Rowe in the backcourt. Now she'll cross the timeline, thumbs down, setting up the offense with 15 on the shot clock. Hands to Rougeau. Rougeau, step back, Cockerham, drives left, spins at the elbow, up, fakes, goes up, blocked, saved by Yoder. Rowe goes up, left block, can't get it. Cockerham rebounds, and now trying to reset, and now will. Rowe, top of the key, 12 on the shot clock. Double screen. She's going to go left off of Murph, and an illegal screen. Yeah, when you're Murph there, you can't you can't roll up your you can't roll up your defender there. You gotta let him get through. Third foul on Kiara Murph. 28 all 314 third quarter. Pressure applied by the Maple Leafs. Now they're really small ball in it. Cockerham's at the four. Smith gives back to Hinton. Yoder and Rowe in the backcourt. Gives to Day. Day crosses. The lefty. Turns it over. Here comes Yoder. She's got nice speed, and she's going to try and run it. Pulls up. Short. Chapman rebounds on the right block. She's got the size advantage. Pump fakes once. Goes up. Can't get it to go. Fredrickson was there for the defense. And goes back to a point. Yeah. On that play, it looked like it just slipped out of Fredrickson's hands, and thought it would be an easy call for the baseline official, but he saw otherwise. But the Saints also brought in Williams for the game. Here's Williams. Skip pass to Smith. Smith, nice between the legs dribble. She's got great speed. Inside drops it to Fredrickson. Fredrickson can't handle. Four on one on the ground. Alvin was bailed out by a timeout called by Brian Morris. That's going to be a 30-second timeout. We'll stay right here. 28 all, 240. Another sloppy quarter. Yeah, and another timeout, and the score is still the same. It just... It's just stagnant on both sides. It seems that neither teams can get anything going. Maple Leafs missed a few more layups. I got offensive rebounds. That's great to see, but you're just not finishing at the rim. You're just tearing down your percentages. You gotta, you gotta make those two footers. It's just, I know that they're, they're, they're probably are getting a hit, but the officials not gonna call every call. So you really gotta finish those. When the Maple Leafs are setting their offense up at the volleyball line, you're not gonna accomplish much when you're breaking the press with 20 seconds to do anything. 
Then you dribble a couple times. You hand it off for the first move of the, the set, and you got 14 seconds on the shot clock. Not a ton of time to set up, so they're going to have to change that and get in their offense a little bit earlier. Both sides are going to have to do that, though. Hinton inbounds and gets to Smith. Top of the key. Swings it to Day. Day dribbles. Hinton, top of the key. Pump faked. Gives back to Williams. Williams drives inside. Hands off to Fredrickson. The lefty takes a 15-footer. Weak side rebound on the offensive glass is won by the Saints. Hinton, three-pointer is good. First, second three-pointer of this quarter. She's got six, 31-28 Saints. Cockerham right wing gives to Rowe, top of the key. At the volleyball line with 20 on the shot clock. Hands to Cockerham. Cockerham faces up, still looking. Drives left. Tries to go around a couple. Now picks up her dribble. Gives to Chapman. Chapman drives middle, spins left, goes up, and gets it to fall. Nice move and great footwork from Denise Chapman. She's got eight. Yeah, great move. Using her right leg on that spin to swing it and get straight to the rim. 31-31-45 remain in the third quarter. Here's Williams, top of the key. Gives to Day. Day looks like he traveled. Drops to Fredrickson. Fredrickson can't handle Williams there to pick it up. Top of the key, Smith, 15 on the shot clock. Smith crosses on Rowe. Pushes off, no call there again. Williams, the lefty, goes up into traffic. Drop to Smith, an air ball. And caught by Chapman on the weak side. Here comes Rowe. She's got Cockerham to her left. She kicks it to Cockerham. Left wing, pump fakes, spins, fouled. And in that situation, kind of wish that Rowe would just push it up to Cockerham. She had a good four or five steps on her. Maybe she could have got to the rim there, but it's still a great shot by Cockerham. And seems to have a couple substitutions as the Saints brought back in Wig. And the Maple is going to bring in two with Copeland and Rock coming in for Rowe and Rujo. 31-30. Aquinas advantage as Grayson Cochran goes to the line for two shots. The 83% free throw shooter last season is now one for three on the night. The old broadcaster's jinx. <laughs> one more for Cochran. She so can still even it. Up and got that one to go. She would have liked to get the first one, but she'll take the tie anyways. Definitely a big hire coming in for Cockerham. 31 all, 115 left in the third quarter. Saints ball in the backcourt. Hinton skip pass to Smith. Up across to Williams. Williams avoids pressure. Here's Wig. Wig drives, gives to Smith. 15 on the shot clock. Smith to Wig, left wing, drives past Yoder. Gets it off and drops it to Brady, who got, got it to go. 33-31, 50 seconds remain. Yoder, right wing. Might have got away with a carry. She goes inside and has it rejected by Brady. Yeah, Brady, six foot three, long arms, athletic, able to get the shots like that. Not quite the size Yoder is probably used to from high school. Inbound underneath, Copeland gets it to Yoder. Right wing, now right corner. Yoder. Inside to Chapman. Chapman spins middle. Pump fake goes up. Right hand. Got it. Feed her. She's got 10. 33 all. 33 seconds remain in the third quarter. Here's Wig. Inside. An errant pass stolen by Chapman. Shot clock is off. They need to hold for the last shot unless they can get something in transition. Yoder kicks left corner. Kyer pump fakes and passes out. Route gives to Yoder. 15 on the shot clock, or rather in on the game clock. An 18-footer from Copeland. And Kyer picks up the foul. And the official said that it was on first on the potential jump ball call. 33 all, six seconds remain. Hinton in the backcourt, now Smith. That's off of her leg. Off of Smith's leg, and that's going to go the other way with 1.8 seconds remain. Yeah, great presence by Yoder right there. Shaking it up, making a dribble off her knee. Let's see if the Maple Leafs can get a quality shot with 1.6 here. Unlikely, but still a chance. Kyer inbounds, throws to Chapman, back to Kyer. Launches, didn't get it off. 33 all, 
is how the third quarter will end when we come back. Fourth quarter action on 91 Win the Globe and on the Go Leafs live stream. Goshen Brewing Company is a brew pub and tap room also serving farm to table food options. Located at 315 West Washington Street in Goshen with easy access to the Mo Race, Goshen Brewing Company also features live music and movies. Founded by Goshen College graduates, Goshen Brewing Company believes in the power of community and upholds the core values of the surrounding area. More about the story of Goshen Brewing Company is available online at goshenbrewing.com. Back here on 91 on the Globe and on the Go Leafs live stream, my name is William Sawyer, joined by Benjamin Cotton. We're all square at 33 after three quarters of play, getting started the fourth quarter in the season opener for Goshen College as they host 21st ranked Aquinas College. Ben, give us a little bit of a recap from that third quarter. Yeah, sluggish, sloppy third quarter there on both sides. But if you look on paper, I guess you could say Aquinas College scored 16 points compared to the Maple Leafs' eight. So double on scoring that would be able to tie the game up. Low scoring game as we're all square at 33. Ball is put into play. Smith with it as she walks it up the court. Left wing to Deja Day, the lefty. Goes to her right, inside, and overthrown over Williams' head. Bad turnover and a bad start for Aquinas in this fourth quarter. Yeah, Williams only 5-5, five, five, just a little bit too high for her thrown into the baseline. Copeland gets it across half court. On the right side, volleyball line extended. Gives to Yoder, top of the key. Yoder faces up, goes to her left, kicks to the corner. Cockerham, three-pointer on the way. Way too strong. Rebound by Dowell. Triple team by Smith. And now here come Aquinas, the counter. It's Williams, or rather Deja Day going up left-handed. Seems like the Maple Leafs haven't figured out she's a left-handed player yet. She's yeah. been able to go to her left every single time. Yeah, definitely. And that triple team didn't help out the rest of our teammates either, giving them the event. 35-33. Aquinas leads. Cockerham top of the key. Faces up. Left-handed pass to Kyer. Inside of Chapman on the left elbow. She faces up, spins left, pump fakes, goes up. Got it, but a travel. And that call is the most debatable call there is when it comes to up and under and using your through step. A lot of people call, call it clean. A lot of people call it travels. Those are always the tough ones. It was a really good move, but yeah, some of them are travels, some of them aren't. In the backcourt, pressure applied. Smith with three to get it across. Smith back. They got to get it across. Looks like 10 and seconds that's be in a 10. row. First one of the game, but been very close. 10 seconds nonetheless. They finally get the 10 second call they've been looking for all game. Trailing by two are the Maple Leafs. Cockerham inbounds. Copeland setting up the offense. Gives to Cockerham. Top of the key faces up. Copeland inside to Chapman. Kicks it out. Yoder, three pointer from the wing. Short. Good board from Chapman, kicks it to Copeland. Pump fake goes to her right, spins left, up, in, got it. Good move from Kiara Copeland. She's got five. Mickeys are tied at 35. Here's the pressure. Deja Day gets across to the lefty. Smith, top of the key, 20 on the shot clock. Smith attacks Kyer, spins, gives to Williams. Here's Alvin, goes up uncontested, left hand left, and the foul. Yeah, fair call right there. Chapman was slow in the rotation as as they was already up with a left hand and just caught it with the lower body. Rose going to sub in for Yoder. 37-35. Sending Alvin to the line for a three-point play if she can convert the free throw. She's two for two on the night. Shot is up and swishes it through. 38-35, 8.02 remain in the fourth quarter. Copeland across half court, attacks the left elbow. Kyer loses it and is pushed out of bounds. Yeah, Jada Smith right there was trying to trying to beat Kyer to the ball. Initially tried to dive on it, but Kyer cut her off and drew the foul. Cockerham to inbound. Brady back in the game. Taking on the challenge of Chapman. She has the height, but Chapman definitely has the strength. I think they should attack her right away. Definitely. She, Chapman showed that uh, she can handle her down low, and we're going to see if she's going to get the opportunity. 
Cockerham to inbound. Finds Copeland. Rowe, right wing. Gives to Cockerham, top of the key, 12 on the shot clock. Kyer goes to the free throw line to travel. Not sure why they didn't throw it inside of Chapman. Yeah, you really want to challenge Brady down there. Uh, she's only a sophomore, and you really got to test her out. Didn't get much playing time last year. You got to see if she can adjust to the game. Hinton skip pass in the backcourt to Day. Day gives to Brady. Brady, the 14-footer, no good. Knocked away and goes to the Maple Leafs. Well, a three-point lead doesn't sound like a whole lot, but the way the Maple Leafs have scored in the second half, three points is a ton. Yeah, definitely. Just no fluent offense so far in this game. Just see if they can create something here. 38-35, 7-20 remain in the fourth quarter. Copeland top of the key, left wing Cockerham. Cockerham faces up. 15 on the shot clock. Cockerham looking. Dribbles, gives to Copeland. Left wing, pump fakes. And has it stripped away. And a jump ball. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Maple Leafs will retain possession. They're showing a stack on top of the key between Copeland and Rowe. See how they attack this. And the quickest form of offense has been Chapman. Let's see if they get in into her. Rowe, top of the key. Double screen coming. Rowe drives to her right. Goes inside. Scoop layup, no good. Rims out. And here comes Aquinas. Hinton. Throws it way down to Brady, or rather Alvin. Intercepted. Here comes Copeland and the Maple Leafs. Kicks it to Rowe, right wing. Goes to the left, spins back, kicks it. Copeland, left corner three. No good. Rebound. Stays with the Maple Leafs, knocked out by a Saint. Yeah, hustle play by Rowe right there. She actually got knocked onto the ground. Stood back up, got a hand on it, knocked it off of a Saint. Substitution for Aquinas yeah, and be, for the Maple Leafs. Be Jada Smith coming in for the Saints, and it'll be two Maple Leafs coming in. It'll be Allison Priggy and Kara Murph. Copeland inbound underneath on the right side. Gets it to Cochran. Copeland off of his screen. Gives to Priggy top of the key. Priggy nearly lost it. Still with it. Gives to Copeland. Ten on the shot clock. Row. Goes off a screen. Foul. Yeah, Williams just got caught with two hands on the drive. Aquinas is playing a very aggressive on-ball defense. Maple Leafs struggling to handle it. Can't even get into their offense. Here's Copeland. 20 on the shot clock. Gives to Priggy top of the key. Priggy faces up. Hands to Cockerham. Gives to Rowe, top of the key. Rowe crosses, spins, spins again, goes up. Can't get it to fall again. And here comes Aquinas. Smith stepped out of bounds. And that's big for the Maple Leafs. It seems like Todd is just turning back to Aquinas College as it just can't get any shots to fall. But maybe the sideline out of bounds can get them back in rhythm or at least get a couple points on the board, draw a foul, get to the free throw line. How many laps is Mariah Rowe going to have rim out on her? I feel like it's been three or four so far. Just cannot get anything to fall inside. Yeah, you definitely got to knock them down. You make, you make a couple of those layups, you're stretching this lead out. 38-35, 5.50 remain. Copeland, right wing. Gives to Rowe, top of the key. Rowe uses a pretty screen. Rowe inside, drops it off to Murph. Murph goes up, no good, and fouls. It seems like it's just contagious. It seems like finishing out of the rim and just spread around the whole team. Just you're getting the shots you want. You're getting the looks, everything, and just either too strong or just a rim out. Murph fourth. Team second. Chapman comes back in for Murph with 540 left. Maple Leafs trail by three, 38-35. Here's the press. In the backcourt. Day. In the backcourt. And another 10-second call. Two ten seconds in the fourth quarter is big. The Maple Leafs have to capitalize. You're getting these turnovers with no points. You're not doing anything for yourself. You gotta you gotta make something happen. Only five, about five and a half minutes left. Cockerham 
Inbounds to Rowe. Inside to Priggy on the right block. Pump fake goes up. Finally gets one to go. Allison Priggy. Her first bucket of the game. 38-37. In the backcourt. They break it. It's Williams. Goes in. Gives to Smith. Smith floater in the middle of the lane. No good. Rebound by Priggy on the weak side. Here come the Maples. It's Rowe. Crosses back into the middle. Rowe all the way inside. Scoop layup. No good again. And a rebound by Aquinas. Here's Smith. Gives to Williams. Smith. Williams. Top of the key. Right wing to Alvin. Alvin drives inside. Gets around Cockerham. Misses it. Chapman. Nice rebound. Here come the Maple Leafs. Cockerham. Loses the handle. Stolen by Alvin. Here's a run out. It's Williams, crosses back to the left side. Stolen away, but a foul. Yeah, Chapman went for the swipe. She she knew that she was left-handed, did a good job of trying to force her to go right. And she took that left step and just on that swipe. Guess the ref saw a little arm there. Chapman's third, team's third. Rujo checks in the game with 4.30 left here. Maple Leafs trail one. Trail by one, but with the score being 38-37 behind Aquinas College. Also, the Saints will check in Wig. Day at the line for two. She is two or three on the night. I can't believe it's 10.35 and we're still watching basketball here. <laughs> Left-handed shot at the line is good. Yeah, it does feel different instead of watching basketball, we're calling it. 39-37, looking to extend it to a three-point game with the free throw. It's up and good. Timeout called by head coach Brian Morris. Yeah, Full Dave, timeout. And Dexter Day was a little slow to walk over to the sideline. Checked in. Hints in for her. So we see if she's be able to come back in here in the fourth. A dry spell is yes. the only way I can think of describing the Maple yes. Leafs offense right now. Just really, really not, not doing anything special. No, it's, it's frustrating to see see how many times you can get to the rim and just not finish and capitalize. It's just, if you, you make your layups, we could possibly talk about eight point, 10 point game of you just leading it and just being smart with the ball and get a, not gonna say an easy win, but a more comfortable win. But now you're trailing by three and everything, everything seems a little bit tighter now because of like a lot more pressure to make your shot, make your free throw. So you really got to focus in. The press is working. You got two 10 seconds here in the fourth quarter. None in the first three, but you got two here. So, like, your defense is there. Now you got to capitalize on offense. Yeah, both the 10 seconds calls resulted in zero points for the Maple Leafs. Just something you can't do. Uh, 40 37, down three points. And again, I said this earlier on the three points seems like a huge lead. I, the Maple Leafs really struggling to come by any points. Yeah. It'll be interesting what happens down this final 4.30. Yeah, it, it just seems tough. It seems like they still got the, the, the... They have veteran players, but it seems like they got that the first game jitter still going on for them. Reset in the court for the Maple Leafs. Cockerham, Copeland, Rougeau, Priggy, and Chapman. Copeland gets across half court. Copeland spins, uses the Chapman screen, gives to Priggy, top of the key, launches the three, way off. Rebound by Williams. Williams pushes to the right wing. Top of the key, Smith. Smith drives inside, floats it up, airballed it. And goes to the Maple Leafs. And a little bit of a force right there by Priggy trying to get that three-point shot off. Just, I know they're only down by three and trying to get the game tied back up, but you don't have to do it by taking two risky shots. 4.05, 40-37. Copeland drives right wing. Gives back to Cockerham. Cockerham drives to the left. She keeps it. Gives to Rujo. Rujo crosses over, loses it, and a jump ball. Goes to the Saints. Substitution for the Maple Leafs. Yeah, it'll be Flowers coming back in. She'll be checking in for Priggy, making this lineup a little bit faster. remain. Smith gives to Wig. Smith, bounce pass to Hinton across half court. Gives back to Smith. Top of the key, 20 seconds remain. Little zone action by the Maple Leafs. Top of the key, Williams. 
Smith left wing looking inside for Fredrickson. Can't find her hitting. Pump fakes four seconds, three seconds, two seconds. Smith gets inside, floats it up. No good, and a shot clock violation by the Maple Leafs. They're doing everything right on defense. They cannot score on offense. Yeah, the defense is supposed to influence your offense, supposed to energize your offense. You should get that momentum going, but it just not being able to see the ball go through the net is demoralizing the Maple Leafs right now. 40 to 37, 319 left. Feels like I keep saying the same score, but just <laughs> a minute less in the game as Copeland walks it up. Copeland, bounce pass to Cockerham, left wing, faces up. Gives to Copeland, top of the key. Copeland looks, gives to Flowers, right wing. Flowers looking inside, drives, baseline, gives to Chapman. Chapman pump fakes, gets around Fredrickson. Fredrickson goes up, Chapman gets it to fall. Another bucket for Tenise Chapman. She's got 12. 40-39, 250. The press and a foul. Unfortunate foul because the ball was loose, but... They just ran into her from behind. Yeah, and Maple Leafs finally make a layup, and then they foul. That, that kind of hurts the momentum. Rougeau picks up the foul. That'll be her first. 40 39, 250 remains. Smith with it. 24 on the shot clock. Top of the key, Smith. Right wing. It's Williams. Gives to Dave. Left-handed three-pointer on the way. Got it. That's a big three-point yeah, shot. Definitely. 43-39, 230 remain from the Ruth Gunner Gymnasium. Copeland drives to the left. Hands to Cockerham. Cockerham three-pointer. No good. Rebound on the weak side by Wig. Yeah, Maple Leafs really want to see that one go down. Here's Williams. Gives back to Smith. Pump fake, drives to the left. She's a lefty and got to her shot. Didn't get it, though. And a tie-up. We'll go to the Maple Leafs. Strong rebound by Chapman there. It's like Coach Miller's going to be sitting in Mariah Rowe, checking in for Rojo. And also the Saints will be bringing number 21, Kochi. Timeout, 30-second timeout by Coach Miller. Ninth season as the Maple Leaf head coach. 43-39, 205, 206 rather, remain in the fourth quarter. Maple Leafs hanging in there with 21st ranked Aquinas College. Down two scores. What do you do, Ben, out of this timeout? You basically just tell them, hey, your defense is there. Just keep defending. I want to say get to the rim, but you got to get a finish. Right now, you don't have time to miss any more layups or open shots. Don't You don't have to force the three, try to trim the lead like that. If you're able to get a stop and get to the free throw line, that's okay. Just just play by play, stop by stop. Just chip it away. You know what they do here? They go to Tanise Chapman. Yeah? Yep. You feeling that? Yep. It seems like Chapman's the only one in rhythm right now. The and, only one that can get a bucket to go. And uh, she's get, pulling out strong rebounds. Let me see what she can do here. 43-39, 206 remain. Fourth quarter. Copeland to Chapman. Right elbow, spins, kicks to row. Back into Chapman. Chapman backs down to the middle. Kicks opposite to Copeland. Copeland floats it inside. Got it to go. There they did. were going to Chapman. 43-41. Here's the pressure. 140 remain in the fourth quarter. Here's Williams. Smith. Travel. Didn't call it. And now they break it. Right wing corner. It's Alvin. 18 into Fredrickson. Fredrickson goes to the middle. Goes up. No good. Weak side rebound goes to the Maple Leafs. That's big there. We'll see if they go back, go back to Chapman working that elbow game. Seems that they're going to Chapman at the elbow, kick out to the wing, and back to her on the block. But the Saints are really throwing that, really throwing that trap hard on her, and they're bringing back in Brady to take on Chapman using that length against the strength. I like Chapman again here. I would go right back to her 43-41. She's creating plays on offense. 120 remain in the fourth quarter. Row. Goes off a Cockerham screen. Back off a Chapman screen. Row to Cockerham, top of the key. Cockerham to Janara in, in the corner. Backs down her player. Spins, goes up left hand. Got it to go. Good move from the Division I transfer, 43 all. One minute remain in the second half. Here's the pressure. In the backcourt, they finally break it. Brady with it. Might have got away with the travel. Resetting the offense, 15 on the shot clock, left wing, 45 seconds. Smith 
crosses, corner, Brady, pump fakes, eight on the shot clock, Alvin goes left, inside, no good. Rebound by Brady and goes to the Maple Leafs. Now with 34 seconds left, the Maple Leafs have two options. They can, oh, we have a timeout here. Full timeout. Now with 34, basically 35 seconds left, the Maple Leafs have two options. Either they can go for the split, the two for one, and get a quick shot, then get the ball back and take the final shot. Or they can milk it down, 30 seconds, only giving the Saints four seconds to take the last shot. I think you got to milk it. There's no way you can get a quality shot in four seconds. Yeah, I, I can definitely say that, especially the way this game's been going. Maybe they can just swing the ball around, be patient, and just give it to Chapman down low and let her make a play. You don't want to go right into Chapman because then she's forced to make either the pass back out or the the shot, but you don't want to give too much time to the Saints, so I think they swing it around, just work it on the perimeter, and then they look it for Chapman with about 10 on the shot clock. About 10? Let okay. her get a bucket. Yeah. Honestly, I, I can agree with that. If there's anybody right now, especially in this game, I, I definitely want the ball in Chapman's hand. She's been making the right pass. She's making the right shot. She's been aggressive, and she definitely had the, the potential. Even if she misses the layup, she can get her own. So if she gets a shot at the rim, potentially get the get the rebound, go back up with it, maybe get fouled. We'll see what happens. Maybe you go back to Flowers, who had the left hand, the left block, and then you put Chapman on the weak side for the rebound because Flowers made a heck of a move there to get a bucket. It was a tough shot over a defender. So yes. maybe you look for her too. Yeah, you definitely can't count her out. But you got to remember with that back, she's still limited. She's still like cringing with every step she takes. So, but you got to remember with that back, she's still limited. She's still like cringing with every step she takes. So. We'll see what Coach Miller has drawn up. Zach Begley's got some inside. Zach, what do you got? <laughs> Technical difficulties. We'll get back to Zach later on. Sorry, Zach. <laughs> 43 all. 34 seconds remain. Flowers going to inbound. Gets to Chapman. Back to Flowers. Flowers top of the key. She's going to attack. Kick to row in the corner. It was deflected. Stays with the Maple Leafs. 24 here left in the shot clock. 28 seconds left in the game. 43 all. They find Flowers in the corner. Flowers, hands to Rowe. Rowe, top of the key, spins back to the right. She's going to slow it back out. Copeland, left wing, nearly stolen by Smith. Gives to Cockerham in the corner. Cockerham drives back to the top of the key to Rowe. It was knocked away. Here's Williams on the layup. No good, but fouled. Definitely can't foul there. You gotta make a contest at the rim, but you gotta be smarter than that, swiping down on the ball. The Maple Leafs with a really poor offensive setup after a timeout. Yeah, you got, gotta execute after a timeout, especially in crunch time right here. Your players are too old for this to, to not execute plays. I'm not saying not make a shot, but. Williams misses the first. That's big. That's her first attempt of the game. Missed it. Coach Miller's looking to call a timeout if they Regardless. missed a the shot here. Yep. Williams, one more at the strike. Ten and a half seconds remain, 43 all. Puts it up and got that one to go. Timeout by head coach Stephanie Miller. 44-43. Full timeout. Oh, man, my adrenaline's going right now. <laughs> what do the Maple Leafs do now after what we saw in the last draw? They didn't really do anything. Well, the, the problem is they're going, it's just east-west. It's just literally, it seems like they're just dribbling to the wing, handoff, dribble to the wing, handoff, dribble to the wing, handoff, throw it to Chapman, three seconds, do something. It's, and then, well, yes, they did that, and then the pressure was turned up by Aquinas, and they threw it right right to a Maple, uh, right into Aquinas' hands, so they're starting to make their passes longer on the wing, but you got to get downhill in this one. Yeah, potentially... Maybe set up Chapman with a, a pick and roll, but just slip it. With the pressure to add it on, maybe get Cockerham coming off a, off a down screen to the wing, or maybe just backdooring that, just trying to play off the pressure there that the Saints are giving. Ten and a half remain, 44-43, Aquinas College, 21st ranked Aquinas College, on top by one point after a Kamara Williams free throw. Got the second of two. Maple Leafs ball. They get the advancement. They're going to take it out right in front of us. Yeah, and the Saints sticking with Brady on Chapman. Still using that length that she has. Ten and a half left. Maybe it's down 44-43. Cockerham's going to inbound the ball. Cockerham with it. Inbound on the near side. 
Smacks the ball. Still looking. Gets to Chapman on the left block. Chapman goes in. Bounce pass to Rowe. Rowe misses the layup. And a foul. Tough. That's a tough one. Chapman made the right play. Took a strong dribble to the middle. Drew two. Drop off the row and just got to finish those. Rowe's third foul. Now, don't know what Brady shot last season, but a center, not typically great at the free throw line, with five seconds left. Let's see what happens. Brady, first one, swishes at three. Her third point of the game. 45 43, 5.3 seconds remain. Marissa Brady at the line to put him up by three points. It's up and switches through clutch free throws. Here's Copeland. Four, three. Copeland goes behind the back. Hoist. No good. 46 43 is the final score from the Ruth Gundon Gymnasium as the Maple Leafs fall to 21st ranked Aquinas College. That's going to do it from the Ruth Gunda Gymnasium. A lot to look forward to from this Maple Leafs team as the season progresses. My name's William Troyer, joined by Benjamin Cotton. Zach Begley is always doing an excellent job on the sideline reporting. Gabe Kermode back in the studio. Stay tuned for the scoreboard report. It's all coming up right here on 91.1 The Globe. You're home for Maple Leaf Athletics. 91.1 The Globe, my name is William Troyer, joined by Benjamin Cotton. We're here after the Goshen College women's basketball team fell in their season opener against 21st-ranked Aquinas College. Ben, what did you see in that game? And maybe run us through some stats quick for both sides. Yeah, lots of ups and downs. I'm just let's start us off with the stats for the Saints on the road. They came in with Deja Day leading the leading the Saints with 16 points. Then on the Maple Leafs, Tanise Chapman was able to score a double double with 12 points and 13 rebounds. Then if we're talking about the downfall of the Maple Leafs. Two starters for the Maple Leafs, Mariah Rowe and Grayson Cockham, combined for two of 24. Yeah, it's just those, those are some tough numbers. It's going hard. It's hard to get a win with that. And like I said, Maple Leafs lose 46 to 43. And great, they showed great defense. I'm not gonna lie, they showed great defense. But just the offensive end, but just it was a struggle. If looking at the numbers, they shot 26 percent from the field and below 10 percent, only at 6 percent from the three point line. So, with those type of numbers, it's always gonna be hard. But the Aquinas College were 21st ranked in the nation, and you hold them to 46 points at home. If I'm hearing that, I'm thinking that we won that game. After the game, Zach Begley had a chance to talk to Coach Miller, and, you know, she said, we held him to under 50 points. We just could not get the job done. A uh, lot of turnovers, not a lot of great offensive possessions. Sloppy play on both sides, but, you know, out-rebounding this team and holding them to under 50 points, they really should have been able to get the job done tonight. I definitely agree. Like you said, out-rebounding them by 11 rebounds. Gosh was able to pull down 49 compared to the Saints. 39 or 38 excuse me and like just look at the numbers you believe that the Maple Leafs should win this game but you gotta go back to the offense generally if your defense is strong enough you can win a few more ball games but if you, ain't, if you can't create offense you can't finish around the rim can't just master the fundamentals of the game it's going to come back and bite you at the end. So that's going to do it for us here tonight 46-43 the final score Goshen College falls to 21st ranked Aquinas College thank you for joining us we'll be back with you on Tuesday night when they host Holy Cross College. That's 91.1 The Globe, your home for Maple Leaf Athletics.